Oh, these are beautiful. This is Crown Prince, and those are the torque turbans. Aren't they beautiful? Another variety of giant pumpkin that Jacob is growing. He's uh, from South uh, India in Kerala. This is a giant pumpkin. Put your hand on this it, please. This is a marrow, which I think is a marrow, but anyway, it looks like a, more like a winter squash. Okay, but how to harvest uh, summer or winter squash? Okay, this is the stem. This is where you have to cut it. If you cut it from okay, right, another courgette adding to the courgette pile. Of course, I added this one also. What on earth is this? This is a pumpkin. Uh -huh. This is all the harvest that we had today. We cleared everything. This is beautiful. The scene that you every gardener likes. Our hedgehog, although it is a stony, never moves. He has an apple. And he has a good apple. Um, okay, this is the walk-in greenhouse that I bought from Wilkinson. I used it two years for growing uh, cucumbers and uh, uh, some tomatoes. It had a design for automatic, semi-automatic irrigation. The pipe going through the ground and then going all around in a U-shape and irrigating the beds that I created here. But now I'm going to change this design to build a hotbed here. I cannot grow seedlings anymore in the house. It gets too damp and uh, smelly and uh, it affects our health. So I'm just going to build a hotbed here using uh, material available. Then uh, when the heat is produced, fill it of course with the horse manure and whatever material that I have available. It will be about, uh, yeah, one meter by one and a half meter and fill it with the horse manure and uh, any compostable material then when the heat is produced I put my seedlings over there in modules and other things and uh, covering it completely with the uh, plastic there is enough light here as you see so hopefully that will be our growing area that will be used for having seedlings for the whole allotment and in the Polytunnel. This is just a walking greenhouse. And uh, yeah, this is what is going to be done. Okay, uh, now the ground is gradually getting ready for the, putting the frame of the hotbed. This is the irrigation system that I put here. This is a pipe joined by tape, duct tape together and the pipe has uh, drilled holes at the bottom of it uh, so the water which was poured into the source uh, would be distributed uh -huh. as you see it is now going to be removed and probably used somewhere else okay now the ground is prepared um, and uh, when this is done, I will put up the structure for a hotspot. Okay, now I've covered the ground with the tarpaulin. So there will be a surface that the weeds cannot grow through it, hopefully. Nothing can stop bindweed anyway, don't believe it. Uh, I was hoping that uh, anyway, most of the weeds will be suppressed and whatever I can see comes through, I will remove it by hand. Now I go for the next stage which is to put up the structure. Hotbed is now finished making the structure. In less than two hours. It's amazing. Uh, I joined the corners of the hotbed uh, with wire because uh, 
I'm not sure if it would be a permanent structure. I, w I will see how it, how it is doing. If it is good enough and it works, I will just keep it. Uh, but really, I don't need to do screw or anything because this is contained practically. Just join them just in the case if they collapse inward until I put the horse manure before that. So, hotbed finished. It's beautiful. And I'm happy that, uh, yeah, on the Christmas Eve I finished the hotbed. It was really growing on me. I thought that, oh, I'd never finish. But when I started it, just less than two hours, it's done. Amazing. I'm now waiting for the delivery of the horse manure and until then I will just uh, keep it empty because if I fill it now with hot, uh, with the uh, horse manure uh, it will start to produce heat at the moment I don't need that but that means that it will finish being a hotbed producing heat before March that's that's the time that actually I need a hotbed to grow things before, uh, in the case of frost and other things, that cold weather, of course, is, is hanging around February, March, even in, into April, sometimes in May. So I really need that to do a little bit in the new year, uh, getting the horse manure, putting it there, and see how it will do. Merry Christmas. Okay, now I'm going to line up the interior of the hotbed with this plastic sheet material so the manure will be contained here it will exclude the light also I need this polytunnel to be clean this greenhouse plastic material I don't want to make it dirty or cause it to rot so there will be a wall between them this air here will be a good isolate, isolator and uh, yeah that means that uh, the heat will not be lost easily. So when I line it up, also the manure will be contained within this. And I'm not going to do with this plastic material quite thick. Okay, now I have lined up inside the hotbed with this plastic sheeting. And it, it will exclude the light, keeps the heat here, and also keeps the membrane of the greenhouse clean. As much as possible, humanly possible. Now the membrane from outside, as you see, is applied, keeping the inside warm and insulated. In this way, without needing any electric or paying for anything, I just provide with organic heat source, source of heat for growing my seedlings in the winter. That is amazing, I like that. That's a good design. If you like, you can do the same. Hotbeds, how to grow early crops using an age-old technique by Jack First. I was in London because of my job, uh, I have to travel to different parts of London. And uh, during the break I went to a bookshop and uh, yeah, I found this book. And uh, very interesting, it inspired me actually, inspired me to build my own hotbed. Uh, hotbed. The book is a small, quite a small. It's about uh, yeah, 128 pages. The price tag for such a small book is a little steep. £9.95. pence. It's published by Green Books, which publishes a lot of books on the gardening. Jack First also has been introduced in this. The book deals with the 
principles of uh, heat production by the manure, how to capture this heat, and how you to use it in, in your in your garden or allotment. It has chap uh, ten chapters with resources and index also, and I read some of them if you like. Hot beds are nothing new. Hot beds, how hot beds work, the advantage of hot beds, preparing the hot bed, creating the hot bed, planning and sowing, what to grow, and varieties, management of your hot beds, case studies, further possibilities. What was a uh, what I found interesting is that it talks about the. Uh, the size of the hotbed you you need. For example, if you build a big hotbed, the heat production takes uh, last longer than a small one. So if you, for example, want to build a hotbed with a hotbed which is a small, and you build it in January, by the February all the heat is finished. You don't have any heat, and at the time that you actually need the heat most. So the timing is also very important in this. So this book really gives you good ideas about the sizes of the hotbed and how long that will last. So for example, if you have a hot, uh, very small hotbed, don't start it later than February, late February probably even. And the sizes are mentioned, bed dimensions, for example, here you see that. And this will affect the growth of your seedlings. The problem is that many greenhouses that we have are also in allotment. We don't have electric in allotment. Greenhouses don't have electric, or if they have, it's costly to hit them. The best way is to grow them indoors if you can. But uh, they may grow leggy if you grow them in a windowsill, or you have to use a lot of electricity. Hotbeds give you the heat source, makes your greenhouse or allotment or polytunnel a heated greenhouse. Or polytunnel and it helps really improves the growth of the seedlings especially when in Britain when we want to uh, start the uh, growing season early enough that in May we can put a lot of crops uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, plants outside ready to to catch the best of the spring so this really helps you to build a hotbed I have such a thing in my allotment. I don't have. I don't want to grow the, my seedlings anymore in the home because they get really leggy, and also here it makes the atmosphere damp and moist, and it's really not good for health. And so I grow them in the old uh, walking in greenhouse, plastic greenhouse that I bought from the Wilkinson. Uh, Four pound is the usual price for it, but I bought it twenty five pound. It was an offer. I use, it for, I use it for growing cucumbers and uh, um, tomatoes, but now I have a polyton for that, so I know I, I'll use this one now for, uh, and I, I showed that I built a hotbed inside that. It captures heat, it keeps the heat well. Then uh, when it is uh, full of the horse manure, I will put the trays of the seed, seedlings uh, inside that and cover it with a sheet of plastic that will provide a very good warm environment for my seedlings to grow uh, for early growth and then I will have my seedlings already prepared for planting outside when the time comes. As I told, the book is small, it's a bit pricey, but uh, yeah, why not? If you want a book that is different, this is the one. How many books we have about a lot in gardening and gardening and all these things. And uh, only one book about this. There were in the olden times some more books than this, but uh, that's it. Now, this is a modern summary of whatever we know about hotbeds. Small book, but very good and actually rare. I recommend this book.